It's Tuesday, August 27, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, James the Just, Part 11, The Way of a Servant. And our scripture is James, Chapter 4. Choices are like friendships. There are options. In an airport choice, for instance, you can either get on the plane or not. You simply just cannot do both. The same can be said of friendship with Christ. You can go to him, or you can live a worldly, comfortable, selfish life. You just cannot do both. If you choose Christ in his way, here's the pathway for the rest of your life. It's called the priority of a servant attitude. I want to share with you a few principles about how to have a servant attitude, which is about as far opposite from a selfish attitude as you can get. Here are three pieces of the discipleship puzzle. Puzzle piece number one is this. In human relationships, conflict is normal. Genesis to Revelation is all about conflict. From the time Cain killed his brother to the Corinthian Christians who sued each other in the courts, to Yodia and Syntyche, sisters in the Philippian church who were constantly sniping at each other, possibly over who was going to wear the purple dress on a given Sunday, right down to today, conflict is normal. The question is, how are you going to deal with the inevitable conflicts in life? And that leads us to puzzle piece number two. In Christian discipleship, dealing with conflict as believers is critical. In God's economy, there are only two ways to deal with conflict, selfishly or as a servant. Cain was the selfish example. He didn't like the approval his brother got from God, so Cain got rid of Abel. He killed him, the first murder in the history of humankind recorded on the pages of Genesis. Well, the servant model is found in many places, but the prototype for us, however, is Jesus. In John's Gospel, chapter 13, we find Jesus dealing with the selfishness of the disciples. Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, so he was preparing the disciples for life without his physical presence to comfort and guide them. What were the disciples doing? They were dividing up the executive perks, arguing over who was going to sit in the seats of power when the kingdom happened. Well, Jesus got up from the table, put on a towel, and to the amazement of his followers, washed 12 pairs of dirty, stinky feet, even the feet of Judas. You say, I can't do that. And I say, you're plumb on target. Which leads us to puzzle piece number three. You need grace to live like that. And grace only comes to the humble. James chapter 4. And he gives grace generously. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humility is not an easy thing. The word humbled in the language of the New Testament comes from a few words linked together, which mean literally face in the dust. During the latter stages of World War II, Harry Truman was thrust into the presidency by the death of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Speaker of the House Sam Rayburn took him aside and gave Harry some advice on being humble. He said, from here on out, you're going to have lots of people around you. They'll try to put up a wall around you and cut you off from any ideas but theirs. They'll tell you what a great man you are, Harry, but you and I both know you ain't. (laughs) For you today, there's a human tendency to hide our low-down ways and exalt our more noble attributes. Where I was raised, we had a good old-fashioned term for that, bragging. To receive grace is to put your face in the dust. It's to turn everything upside down from the way the world gives its approval. It's to recognize the truth about you and sin and agree with God. So the questions before the house then are this. Am I ready to follow Christ all the way? Am I ready to exalt my low ways, which is to confess my sins, and hide my good points, which is to not depend on my self-goodness? Hmm. Am I? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.